My name is Richard Casper. I'm a Marine Corps veteran, and I teach the course here at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. This program started basically because after my injuries in war, I didn't know how to deal with myself. I came back, had a brain injury, my best friend was shot, killed. I didn't know myself at that point. Art has helped me by giving me a chance to have a voice again. I used to not be able to leave my house. I couldn't go talk to people. I would physically throw up and get sick. If you could be 0% that's committing suicide, 100% being the best you can be. After the Marine Corps, after being injured, I was at probably like a nine or a 10. And after the school, I was back to like 85% me. For people who may struggle like I did and didn't want to break out of the house and be like, I'm not sure if this is gonna work. I just want them to know my story and be able to come out here and learn with other combat vets how to do art and if they're looking for one more way, if they just come out here and give me a chance, it's going to be worth it. What we were aiming for is to express what we were dealing with, you know, when we were deployed and during our military career, where we literally get out of our element, go on this kind of like alternate reality to go back in time, think about what we went through and express it to other people. Just being exposed to different concepts of art like at the museum and some of the contemporary art we saw. Um, that's what influenced me to try doing a performance piece for my last project. The opportunity to be at the school was just phenomenal. It was amazing. We could, at lunch, we could go and wander the halls of the museums and that was, that was pretty awesome. I think the hardest part was actually talking about what I've been through with it was easy talking to Richard because he is a combat veteran and he has been through stuff I've been through. And My job was to you know, go find IEDs or find landmines or anti-personnel landmines and take them apart. And little did I know, I was putting that stuff inside me. At first it's a little hard to let yourself become vulnerable. Um, you won't really know what to do right away. It takes a couple days. I know for me it took a week. Being surrounded by a bunch of veterans that like know what combat feels like, knows the after effects of combat, knows how it feels to come home. It was really comfortable being here. They're gonna come to class like normal college students, treated like normal people, that know how to be like, I can be in college, I am a normal person, and I could live like everybody else lives. If even one of them chose to go to college and study art and has that artist brain to where it saved them, it's totally worth it.
There we go. That should fix it. How's that? That uh, Windows update uh, <laughs> certainly messed up my audio all the way across the board. I had the same problem with Streamlabs on my stream on Twitch. I didn't realize that it impacted OBS as well. So, but I think it's okay now. I think it's okay. So I was saying we're going to work on uh, adding some garnets and doing some line work on this uh, garnet geode painting. I love the depth of color that we got and all of these, all of these really cool lines in the center. We're going to enhance some of that stuff. And hi, Lady Brittany, hi country. And we did a pour over a vase and this vase turned out just gorgeous. So when we do acrylic paint over a vase, need to sand down and clean up the bottom of it. Need to clean up this ridge right here. And then we're going to use a product um, to cover glass. Uh, it's actually dishwasher safe. Um, I don't know that I would recommend putting it in the, uh, in the dishwasher, but if I use this product, then you can put water and flowers and whatever else you want in that base. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping that Kyle or uh, Brett will come in and help me out with that stream title. that's on Twitch. But we will see. So, yeah, I saw it when I first started, but I can't, uh, I can't change it. Or maybe I can change it, but I don't know how to change it. So, <laughs> but it's me. I'm not Rick. I'm Mrs. OEF5. <laughs> so, right? Hi, Rick. Well, Rick is an amazing guy, but. That's not me. Yeah, and we're not in music. So I was thinking about where to lay these garnet stones, right? And I don't have a whole lot of them. And I'm leaning towards just putting them along this little line right here in this corner on the white and this little line here on the white. Uh, and I thought I'd lay them out and kind of look at it for a second and see what we thought. Now normally when I do one of these and I add stones, I add them when the paint is wet. I like the effect of the paint coming up around the stones because they look like they belong there, right? They look like they're part of the piece. Uh, I didn't do that on this one because these stones are very, very small and we had so much paint on this canvas that I was concerned that if I did that, uh, they'd just be buried lumps and we certainly don't want that effect. So this time we waited and uh, we're going to lay these out, see what we think about this layout. We might change it around a little bit, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of the garnets being on this white edge to finish out the geode, right? And then leaving those corners just blank. Okay. 
which we've not done on other geode paintings. You can see a few of them. Which side are they on? Here they are. Here they are. <laughs> here they are. <laughs> I never get the right side right. It's right here. <laughs> These three right here. And all of those stones were put on uh, while the paint was still wet. So, today we're going to do it a little different. And I'm debating as to whether or not I should use these large stones at all. But we'll see once we get it laid out. So once we finish this geode series, one of the things I'd like to do uh, with Creative Vets and I started to kind of get this together last night in my own stream on Twitch, uh, is I want to work on taking some old jewelry, old memorabilia, and um, making some memorial necklaces. So uh, two weeks from now, I think that that's what we will be working on here. Hmm. Let's see if I can pick this up so you can see it without spilling these off since they're just sitting there. What do you think about that? I kind of like that line on the edge. That's a nice little finish, right? I don't think I want to put anything in the center. I think I want to do line work around here, enhance some of this line work with this browns, with this bronze and burgundy, that garnet color, uh, and leave that as it is. Yeah, I think we'll do just that. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and use, this is uh, called Dimensional Magic. It's another product made by Mod Podge. I love that company. Um, and what this does is, uh, it's a type of glue, but it will stay in place, right? It'll stay dimensional, it'll stay kind of built up a little bit. And it leaves like a really nice glassy finish and has a really great adhesion. So once these things are laid down here, uh, they're never going anywhere, <laughs> which I like because this has to hang on the wall somewhere, right? We want to make sure that wherever this piece ends up, that everything is nice and secure on it. There you go. Just add a couple more so we don't have any holes. There. Very nice. Okay, so for the center, I'm going to come around in some bronze and uh, extend these lines out a little bit. Grab a piece of scrap paper so I can <laughs> get these acrylic pins going.
So what have you all been up to today? Anything fun and exciting? Hi, Pretha Panda. That's exciting. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you'll be fine. I am sure you'll be fine. What time is that going to start, Lady Brittany? Ah, okay. So I'm just coming in here with a thicker line in between these two thin lines. <coughs> I'm really tempted to bring in like some purple in the center. That works. Zoom in a little bit and see if you can get a better view of what I'm doing. <coughs> Just adding a little bit of purple to these fine lines in the center. One of the things that I like about these acrylic paint markers on top of an acrylic pour is the added level of depth that it gives these paintings. I like that it sets up boundaries for the eye, right? but it really gives that greater detail 
and calls attention out to all of those different those different details that are in there and I like that. <laughs> so when I uh, do these acrylic pours I select my paints and match up the colors to markers that I have. And like with this one, you're hardly going to be able to see this line work that I'm doing when this is done. Like you'll barely be able to see it. But something that I enjoy, that I can see every time I look at the gallery, gallery wall of paintings behind me, is when the light hits a painting and you catch a new detail, when you see something new, right? And a painting that you may have had for um, years, all of a sudden, there's a new part of the story there. It's one of the reasons why I like to do this same color paint on top of <laughs> the same color, right? I like that dimension. And even though it's not a detail that you can easily see or that you may see every day when you look at it, I do think it adds to the overall composition. To have that in there. brighter purple line right here. And I think in this really nice bronze section with all of this gorgeous, gorgeous colors over here. I think I'm going to do just a few black lines over there.
just like that. See what a difference that makes? That, that little detail there makes such a difference. Now this line work should be repeated on this line. There are some points in this line. That I don't want to lose some color effects. So to be very careful about coming through this edge and leaving those as they are. more up this side. Trying not to touch any of that with my hand as I do this. And I think we'll do a couple of lines over here as well. You feel good today. Good. Good. I'll tell you what, country. I had this little painting for you on my mind last night. I thought about it quite a bit. So I have a painting right here, you can't see it, just to my left, that uh, we're going to clear coat here in just a second, as soon as we come to a, a stopping point on this painting. Um, and that painting was, um, well, it's going to Country Magic. So it will be her painting. And it's an interesting thing. Sometimes, uh, sometimes as I'm painting something, 
uh, I'm telling the story. And sometimes I feel like I'm going along and all of a sudden the painting is telling me the story, right? It's one of the ways that working with art this way kind of opens your mind. <laughs> Gives you the ability to see things, talk about things, process through stuff that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise. So, originally we did an acrylic pour on this canvas that's over here to my left that we're going to work on in a minute. Um, and that pour was very, uh, hey OEF, um, <coughs> excuse me, very uh, red and white and it looked like it might have a, a dead piranha in it. It, it looked um, very otherworldly. Um, but not, uh, not welcoming by any means, right? Didn't look like a happy place. Uh, and as I was painting that painting, Country was talking about um, some of the battles that she personally has had, what she's gone through with her uh, mental health and things that are impacting her. And I made a single choice. I decided that I was going to do a, a second pour on top of a wet painting. So I did the first pour. It came out the way it did. And I decided I was going to do another pour right on top of it. So it's a ton of paint on a canvas. Um, and so I did that. And uh, that one choice, and you know, we've talked about this on this channel before, right? You ever feel like you come to a point where you can't make a choice? I mean, you absolutely can because you've made thousands before. Um, so I made this one choice to do another pour on top of this painting. And as I was looking at it and how changed that painting became, uh, I told Country, uh, that I think that is her painting. I think that it has her story in it. And then it's important that it go to her. So that painting will be sent to her. Uh, because sometimes when you're going through uh, depression or other issues like that, and everything hides under the surface and you feel it all and, and you deal with it all, but it's it's not up front, right? Like, people can't even see it. It's just you. And on the surface, it looks different. And you, you, you make one choice, and it ripples out forever. It changes everything, right? Um, you make a choice to do some self-care. You make a choice to start processing past trauma. You make a, a choice to share your story, to talk about it. And there's just ripple after ripple after ripple from that effect, right? And that's what changes lives. Um, and that painting is that part of her story. So it was quite the honor to get to ripples, right? Here, I'll show you the painting. So here you see what was there before, right? What that looked like. The whole painting looked like that before. But on top of that, right? As you come through everything that was there before, there are all these ripples of change. It takes you to a whole nother place. It doesn't take away what was there before. It's all back there. It's all just under the surface. You can still see it. But something new is happening, something good is happening, right? 
And I had this on my mind. Thinking about today's stream, thinking about that painting all night. Being able to um, do paintings like that, I, I consider that a huge honor. That is just the best to me. So I can't wait for her to get it. I think we're almost done with this one. I am loving how this looks. This is so pretty. The colors are gorgeous. It took me a minute to get all these colors mixed to get just, just the right ones. We played around with them for quite a bit. think I love the shine of that bronze on that burgundy it's so pretty but yeah I think we're uh, I think we're done with it So this dimensional magic around these garnets, that'll all dry clear. It'll look like a little river when it's done. It's cloudy right now because it's wet. And then once that dries, we'll clear coat the whole thing. Um, I was going to do some line work in this red, but I think I'm going to leave it. Yeah, I think it's done. It's very striking, isn't it? So I'm going to set this over here to dry. And I think I'm going to sand this down real quick and we're going to get this coated and then we'll uh, work on clear coating that other painting. So I'm just going to sand the paint off of the rim of this glass for you to see because it's sitting in my lap. But I want to take this down to just glass on the top. I don't want any paint left over on here. Because I don't want this paint to accidentally get chipped off of a rim and then come off anywhere else on the, on the base, right? And I want a nice straight line on the top of this. So that when I put this um, clear coat over it, I can take the clear coat 
up to the top of the glass, past the paint, sealing it in, so that we don't have to worry about um, it being impacted by anything that's placed inside the base, right? Getting scratched off or whatever. We're going to do the same thing on the bottom, but I got to put it in my lap, so you're not going to be able to see me to do this. My apologies. You can probably hear it though. <laughs> but again, I want this clear coat adhering to the glass around the paint. Don't want any of the paint sticking out. Because I don't want it to get scratched off or damaged later on. And there's a little sticker on the bottom of this vase that is pretty stuck on here as well. But I can get that all cleaned off once this coating is on there and this paint is nice and secure. You can hear it though, yeah. Does it sounds scratchy. So, I need to grab um, I need something to stand this on. I didn't think about that before stream. A little flow trawl might work. <coughs> no. That will not work. Water bottle's probably not tall enough. Uh, barely tall enough. Maybe this will work. All right, that works. That works. All right. So I'm going to start right here on this edge. I'm not going to do the bottom, it doesn't need it. It's just glass. And then I'm just going to touch the rim of this face. And make sure that's coated too. Hmm. I 
I guess I didn't realize just uh, how clear some parts of this paint were. Like how much you could see through the vase. That's kind of cool. When it's sitting here like this with the light coming through the bottom of it, there are several parts where as the paint dripped and the different colors of paint where you can really see through it. It's a pretty cool effect actually. It's very drippy looking of course. And I knew that you could see through some of the parts of the top because it's the look we were going for. But I didn't realize you could see through the bottom as well. which is pretty cool because once you put something in this vase, you'll be able to see a little bit of it. I kind of like that effect. I have another vase I want to do this to. I'm seriously thinking about doing it all in blacks and silvers. I think that would be really pretty. Maybe we'll do that when we do the uh, Snowflake Obsidian Geode, that next geode. Maybe we'll do a, an overpour like this with that and do it with that other vase that I have. This stuff is super thick. But I really want to make sure I get that rim. that paint is nice and sealed in there. Whew. Strong. Uh, let me go rinse this out real quick. I'll be right back. I suppose I could have muted for you, sorry. <laughs> All right. Move that up there a little bit. And then we're going to use a different type of Mod Podge. I'm going to use a matte coat. Uh, for this painting right here. I do have to wait for that dimensional magic to dry on the geode painting. Or we go ahead and clear coat it too. Yeah, this is the one that's going to uh, country. This is going to be hers. I really like it.
can like it too. I hope you like it. <laughs> I hope you do. I mean, you could just say, nah. Nah, I don't want that. <laughs> no thanks, missus. I appreciate the sentiment, but... <laughs> <laughs> it does, yes, they do look different in person. What you can't see on camera that I can see is one, the lines, how many ripples are here because there's hundreds of them. Um, and the the cool part about this, one of the reasons why I, I, I liked it for you as you were talking to me, is that you can still see the painting behind it. You can see what was, and you can see the change rippling out. That's, that's the cool part. Because, you know, just because you go through something and you get through it, right? You get over it, you get through it, you learn how to cope with it, you change things in your life. It doesn't mean it never happened. It's still there. Still help shape who you are. Just make different choices. Just move on. Do different things that are good for you, right? My daughter's today was looking at uh, this painting and then looking at the wall and she said one of the things she likes about them is she likes the sides. <laughs> so she said, I think I like the sides of your paintings as much as the paintings. <laughs> I was like, really? She's like, yeah. Because I make them wrap around the canvas. And I was like, yeah, the sides are pretty cool. And if you look at this side here, it goes from that to that to that, which mirrors this front, right? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a cool effect, right? But yeah, there's a, there's a few pieces on here that, just little parts that I know, I know the camera doesn't see like I see. Like this little bit coming through, right, is so cool. All of those little pieces breaking through, it looks so cool in person. This bit down here with the lacing where all of that breaks through from the back to the front. I know you can't see how deep that looks, but. In person, because there's this dark here underneath, right? It looks like this has just flown through. Like it's like it's flowing across the top. So it looks deeper. like it. I'll be anxious to see how this vase turns out. I'm going to test it before I put it in the store. 
I'm going to put some water in it, see how it works. Make sure it's it's functioning okay. So we did an over pour over some Christmas ornaments, right? And they were clear glass Christmas ornaments. And uh, the paint that I used literally just peeled off. It took nothing for me to peel them off. And everybody loved them and they were really, really cool looking. <laughs> um, but you couldn't hang them on your tree. I mean, every time a tree branch touched them, it would chip the paint off, right? And I don't, I don't want that for people. So um, this winter, well, probably this fall, uh, I've ordered some, uh, well, I haven't ordered them, they're in a wish list, but I have some in a wish list to be ordered this fall of frosted glass ornaments. And we're gonna do some acrylic pours over those because I absolutely know the paint will adhere to them they're made to be painted on. The ones I had were not, they're just clear, clear glass, so. Uh, but I want to use this product to coat them. So this vase is a perfect test to see how that works. And if it works out well, then this fall we'll just make a whole bunch of really cool Christmas ornaments. Because I loved how those looked. They were really, really cool. They just didn't work out functionality wise, right? So we're going to make that happen. Um, but like I said in the beginning uh, of this stream, one of the things that I want to do here in the next couple of weeks is work on um, some memory necklaces where you take uh, antique jewelry, old jewelry, family jewelry, whatever, right? Um, and uh, make it into wire wrap a frame that it can it can be held on. Uh, take the pin backs, take the earring backs off of of pieces, and wire wrap them all together and make a single necklace. Uh, but I think it doesn't necessarily have to be inherited pieces or old pieces or whatever this concept works for a lot of different things, right? So, for instance, if you wanted to make a wire-wrapped collage of um, Army million memorabilia, military memorabilia, um, medals, anything like that, uh, this technique would be a good technique to use, so I kind of wanted to share it uh, here with Creative Ads. Um, so, once the geode series is, is done, which next Thursday will be the last piece of that, then um, we'll start working on that. So that'll be our next series that we'll work on here on Thursdays uh, at 4 p.m. Eastern every week. Uh, I did miss, um, I missed last Thursday because we had a family emergency and I am sorry that I missed you guys. Uh, but we're back. Um, and I think that that's what we're going to be working on next. Uh, I also have some, um, I have some old wooden pieces that I want to incorporate into a piece and I'd like to wood burn them, right? So turn them into something different and then incorporate them into another piece. I also have some old um, raw bamboo wooden beads that I want to do some wood, bur wood burning on. So we'll be doing stuff like that here, um, probably for about the next month. <laughs> and then I need a plan for Halloween. What are we going to make for Halloween? because I'd like to do some Halloween stuff. Maybe some <laughs> winter holiday stuff too. But I am a fan personally of Halloween. 
So I'd like to do some Halloween stuff at least. <coughs> Excuse me. So these two paintings have been clear coated. I don't think they need another coat. I think they're good. There's a lovely beta cat hair on that one. Of course. I do think this can use another coat though. So let's do that. This is a red, white, and blue uh, acrylic pour with, um, I cut out black and white vinyl for an overlay uh, for my husband. And some paintings only need one coat. Some paintings need two. I need to add a mustache. Oh, that would be funny. That would be funny. I love this idea. Just draw it on right now. Well, I've already put a clear coat on this once. Uh, and acrylic paint won't go over a clear coat. So if I did that and then tried to clear coat it, it would legit just smear all over the place. And that would be a problem. But what I can do is add a sticker. Uh, yeah, I can cut out another piece of vinyl, put it over the clear coat, clear coat it again. So, yeah, I can put a mustache on cap. Or I can go find those uh, fuzzy costume mustaches that we have someplace and put a great big one on him. <laughs> and then he could have a big fuzzy mustache. That's too funny. Do I have any mustache stickers? I think I've, I think I've given them all to my grandson. I don't know that I have any stickers. Sitting here doing nothing all night. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dan. Am I putting you to sleep? I don't have any vinyl mustaches cut out. I mean, it wouldn't be hard to do one. But I don't have any already cut out. I do that to people, you know. You wouldn't be the first person to fall asleep during one of my streams. I hear it's very relaxing. <laughs> That's why I have so many gamers watch me, right? They get all keyed up playing uh, first person shooter games and then use me to calm down before they go to bed. I do think it's relaxing watching the acrylic pours and stuff. So 
it's hard for me to argue with because I find it relaxing. Like it's mesmerizing to watch them. So, oh good, good, we still have an hour. Okay, so I do have one more thing that I wanna do. Um, with the cricket. Before I have to get off of here, I just drop that. So I suppose we can make Captain America a mustache real quick and put it on him. <laughs> so we can cut that out on the cricket and give Cap his mustache. I don't know how with all these desks and this whole studio that I just constantly run out of space. It's amazing to me how that's possible. I guess so because it's certainly filled up. Okay, so I'm gonna change our scene and when I do, I gotta check this audio and make sure I still have it. Do I? I do. Excellent. Excellent. Exactly. So how big should Cap's mustache be? Uh, appreciably smaller than, appreciably smaller than three inches. Do we like this one? Do we like this one? Well, it's gonna be tiny. Here's a really curly one.
but it's going to be tiny. I think this one. There you go. That's what size it should be. Giganto mustache. How about that? What, you don't like that? Move this over here where you can see him. can't really move it any higher. I mean, that's not bad there. You think a tad larger and you think a little smaller. I kind of like it. What is it? It's almost two inches. Right? Right? You have to be able to see it. I mean, if I make it like real size, you can't, you can't really see it. Well, you know, the other thing we could do is make it um, gray. Because <laughs> he doesn't actually have a, uh, a black mustache, does he? I mean, he's got light brown hair and gray hair. You like that? You like it in gray? I mean, we can make it like blue. I kind of like the gray. Then you can really see it. You can see it better than you can in the black. Nah, gray. <laughs> he was watching earlier. So, you know, he could know what was going on if he was focusing and pay attention. Do I have a tiebreaker anywhere? Anybody else got a vote on this? Should this be black, gray, red, blue? Gray? Okay. I got it. We're doing a gray mustache. So here's the real question. Should I just cut out several of them and we can just put them on everything? Like I can put one on his mic and <laughs> put him on his headphones. <laughs> we could just put them everywhere, right? That's not what I wanted to come over here and do, by the way. Y'all distracted me. That was not my intention tonight, but that's okay. Sometimes that's how streams go. 
Really? That's funny. Yeah, let's do 10 of them. Well, I can get 12 on there in two rows. Let's do 12 of them and then I'll have a clean cut line. <laughs> I like it. Well, you know, maybe that's what I'll do is I'll just offer a free stash with every order. What do you think? <laughs> uh, right? Exactly. Well, this I'm going to need over here. I can't get rid of that. This needs to dry flat. So I'm going to set this back over here. All right. Oh, I just knocked everything down. Look at that. All right, come back over here to my other desk with me. And we'll give him some nice, you know what, let's do silver. Not just gray. <laughs> Let's do silver. Like a nice, shiny, metallic silver. I like that. Yeah, I have a feeling I could put these all over the place. I bet I could come up with a bunch of bunch of different places these bad boys can go. Why do I always do this? The struggle. It's like flypaper. You ever mess with flypaper? Super sticky. Sticks to everything you don't want it to, and nothing that you do. <laughs> oh, he'll see me. So professional. What do you mean, so professional? What are you talking about? Hecklers. I don't need no problems. I can't decide if this clear coat made this more clear or if it was always that clear. See how much you can see my hand through that? See how clear that is? It's pretty cool though. <laughs> I get the bottom of it cleaned up. Right? 
it's so, the colors are so cool. I really like it. I ought to have a VOD contest at some point where you guys can tell me how often you saw Beta's hair in a stream. Pretty sure it's fairly frequent. I guess I don't need to worry about it, right, Dan? It's all good. I'll just tell people, Dan said he can't see it. What's your problem? I'm almost too short to reach these way up here. mustache on cap. What do you think? Did you seriously just put a mustache on Captain America? <laughs> what do you think? What the actual? It's gray. Like yours. What the? <laughs> you Did you not think I was paying attention? You don't like it? I told him you were paying attention. <laughs> it's done. I actually wasn't. I was in crazy stream and just having to pop over. Look. I saw it. It's a big ass mustache. Well, that's Dan's fault. Oh, so I got Dan to blame for the mustache? For its size. He wanted it larger. Lady Brittany wanted it smaller. Dan won. Chat, you're horrible. Everybody said it should be gray, though. That was a universal decision. <laughs> Dan. I take full responsibility. <laughs> Dan. Dano. I like it. You like it? It's fine. Here you go. It's not done. You gotta put the clear coat over that. No, I don't. I don't. I don't know where to hang it now. I mean, I made 12 more, so if it falls off. You made 12 <laughs> mustaches? Yeah. Why? Just in case. <laughs> Just in case something comes up. And I need a silver mustache. What's that, Graham Pepper? <laughs> Come here. School, you want to say hi to Creative Vets? Creative Vets, this is Skull. Come here, Skull. Skull is a service dog for a medically retired uh, military police officer. Pause. Pause. Oh, it's too, it's too slick? It's slippery. He'll fall down. Yeah, it's a too slippery. Sorry, buddy. 
It's all right. Yeah. He's a good boy. Him a good boys. He's a good Him boy. Good boys. Let's go, you want a treat? Oh. Skull said yes, I do want a treat. Oh. I always want a treat. Oh. Here, don't get on don't get on cap. Does a good boy go treats? That's a good boy got treats. Yes, that's a good boy. Alright, down. Good boy. Good boy. Can Heel. you can you put this back in the front room, please? Heel. Heel. Yep. That's skull. He's a good boy. Alright. So, Look at mommy. Look at mommy. Go sit. I have a couple of more things that I need to get done tonight. That's Mamaw. That's not mommy. Yes, but Mamaw gave me treats. <laughs> <laughs> I realize he's a service dog, but um, he's my grand dog, and so I spoil him a little bit. I mean, he's my only grand dog. You gotta spoil him, right? Like, that's a legit thing. All right. So. <laughs> I love everything about this. Like, that's just spectacular, you guys. That's the best. Let's just stash these other mustaches for future use. So we don't lose those. <laughs> he can peel it right off. If he really doesn't like it, he can peel it right off. But I'm pretty sure he'll leave it because he thinks it's funny. If you didn't think it was funny, you wouldn't have come all the way up here to, to tell us about ourselves, right? <laughs> all right, so. This is the other thing that I wanted to work on. So I need this, this measurement to be accurate, right, in order for this to work. So I don't think that between here can be any bigger than two inches. So if I take the point of this eye, It's a baby cat mask. I 
have something going out on Monday. And that item needs a uh, that item needs a little baby cat mask. So I think. If I take this to nine and a half, that should work. So that would be nine and a half inches tall um, by seven and two. 7.28. But I don't think it should be wider than an inch at the bridge of the nose. <laughs> give, give him alternate costumes. So this has to be smaller. This is way too big. So this starts here. That's perfect. <laughs> I just took away his razor. Uh, I think it's great. Maybe this should go. Like here. That's probably better. And then this needs to go on this same line. Right about there. Well, I think Cap looks better than ever. I think that was a, a definite improvement. Hey, fish. Should we put a mustache on the beta cat too? <laughs> this is a surprise. I don't think we're really going to put a mustache on the beta cat. You missed the big, the big reveal for OEFs. Red, white, and blue cap. Look. He got a mustache. <laughs> yeah, you got a silver mustache instead of a black one because, you know.
All right, so. Why isn't there? There's not one with the background on it, is there? It's all right. General America. <laughs> oh, he's been promoted. <laughs> All it takes is one, you're just one great mustache away from a promotion. Fabulous. All right. my black paper. It's probably at the bottom. A hundred percent at the bottom. Okay. <coughs> It's all right, I'll get it. I can do this. All right. Cut this out of medium card stock. Cancel it. I've done something wrong. There it is. So how many? One per sheet. Is it a legit thing, Dan? Really? That's too funny. <laughs> I think we can definitely fit two of these on a single page. So we're just going to have to keep moving them around again. But that's okay. Cricut doesn't know how to conserve paper. Or 
any other materials for that matter. Medium cardstock. Ah, interesting. Interesting. I don't know. I'm like at the end of being able to use these blue mats. They're just not sticky anymore. But we're going to try it real quick. So did his great grandson get to be a superhero because something happened to him or because Steve Rogers is his great grandfather? Did it skip a couple generations? Did something happen? Uh Yes, it does. I love pineapple on pizza. She's wrong. Um, next weekend. As in, not two days from now, but next weekend. Okay. Well, we have some uh, appointments up north that have to be taken care of. <laughs> so I can better answer that question on Wednesday or Thursday. <clears throat> Got some nice Nike swishes.
right? All right. I'm going to do one more of those. How's it look? Are these backwards? Does it go that way? Does it go that way? Do they go both ways? I don't know which way they go. It's turned out cute, right? I suppose I should make little skulls and ashiras and tracks kitties. <laughs> We're going to have to have all the pets, right? Very good. Okay, so next Thursday, uh, 3 p.m. Central, I will be back here. We will be working on a black, silver, and white uh, snowflake obsidian geode acrylic pour painting. It'll be the last in the series. And then um, that next week, we're going to start working on these uh, memorial pieces. Uh, and we'll probably continue to do that for about a month. I would think it's going to take me at least four streams to get through it. Uh, they may take a little bit longer to do. So we may be streaming a little bit longer on Thursdays, but we're going to see how it goes. So, uh, for now, thanks so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate y'all. And we are going to wrap this up. So, if I don't see you here next week, I am sure uh, you can find me, Mrs. Zoe F5, uh, around Twitch. So, thank you so much. I appreciate you. And uh, y'all have a good night.
We are a nonprofit that's helping combat disabled veterans heal through the arts and music. Our art programs in Chicago and California help combat disabled veterans tell their story through art. We enroll them into the best art institutes in the country. We pay for their tuition, their housing, their food all three weeks so that they can finally tell their story through art. We also bring combat disabled veterans to Nashville, to places and rooms like this here at the Grand Old Opry to tell their story for the first time with pro songwriters all about the things that they went through that they've never been able to talk about before. These programs have been extremely successful in helping veterans combat their PTSD. Right now, Creative Ed's has more veterans applying for our programs than we do funding. So if you can go to creativeets.org and donate, we would appreciate it.